by the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah, even the darkest night will end, and the sun will rise and shine, even the darkest night will end, and the sun will rise and shine, and the sun will rise and shine. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وصحابك يا نور الله ما شاء الله سبحان الله الحمد لله viewers of money channel welcome to arise and shine before we begin we give you a blessing of reciting through the park upon the prophet of allah sallallahu ta'ala sallam and then we listen to some verses of the quran and what a brilliant way to start the day by listening to the blessings of through the park and the verses of the quran and the reason why we do this viewers of money channel is so that when we listen to the blessing of through the park inshallah azawajal will become habitual in reciting through the park today's blessing is as follows is narrated that Sayyidina Hazrat Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala said that supplication remains suspended between the heavens and the earth and nothing from it ascends until you recite Salat upon the beloved Nabi sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Viewers of the channel, from this we can gather that whenever you do a dua, whenever you do a dua, always begin with reciting the Rudapak upon the Prophet of Allah sallallahu ta'ala. So whenever you do any wazifa, make sure you do it with begin and the end with reciting through the park upon the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So you get the dua is like the blessings insha'Allah Azawajal. Like I said, viewers of Malik Channel, after we've listened to a blessing of reciting through the park, we also have the daily blessing, the privilege of listening to some verses of the Holy Quran. Let's now go and listen to some verses of the Holy Quran. Sallu ala al-Habib Sallallahu Ta'ala ala Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim. मैं अल्लाह ताला की पनाह में आता हूँ शैतान मरदूज से बिस्मिल्लाहिर्रहमानिर्रहीम अल्लाह के नाम से शुरू जो निहायत मेहरबान रहम वाला और उनमें कुछ अनपढ़ हैं जो किताब को नहीं जानते मगर जबानी पढ़ लेना या कुछ अपनी मन घड़त और वो निरे गुमान में है तो खराबी है उनके लिए जो किताब अपने हाथ से लिखें फिर कह दें ये खुदा के पास से है कि इसके इवस थोड़े दाम हासिल करें तो खराबी है उनके लिए उनके हाथों के लिखे से और खराबी उनके लिए इस कमाई से قل اتخذتم عند الله عهدا فلن يخلف الله عهده ام تقولون على الله ما لا تعلمون اور بولے ہمیں تو آگ نہ چھوئے گی مگر گنتی کے دن تم فرما دو کیا خدا سے تم نے کوئی عہد لے رکھا ہے جب تو اللہ ہرگز اپنا عہد خلاف نہ کرے گا یا خدا پر وہ بات کہتے ہو जिसका तुम्हें इल्म नहीं हाँ क्यों नहीं जो गुनाह कमाए और उसकी खता उसे घेर ले वो दो जख वालों में है उन्हें हमेशा उसमें रहना जन्न 
هم فيها خالدون اور جو ایمان لائے اور اچھے کام کیے وہ جنت والے ہیں انہیں ہمیشہ اس میں رہنا صدق اللہ العظیم صلو علی الحبیب صلی اللہ تعالیٰ علی محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ویئرز آف مدر چینل یو واچنگ رائز ان چینل جٹ ہیو دا پریولیج دا بلیسنگز of listening to some verses of the Quran. And I pray to Allah Azza wa Jalla that every household has the opportunity to read and listen to the Quran on a daily basis. And the translation that we had today was from Kanzul Iman, a great translation that I request, I previously requested, I'm going to continue requesting, that we have a copy of this in every single household as well, and we can read it and benefit from it as well. This has also been translated into English as well as it is available on our website, www.dawatislami.net. Uh, Insha'Allah, in the coming months, it'll be available in the book form. But at the moment, you can download it completely free of charge and take the benefit from it as well. Viewers of Mudi Channel, you're watching Rise and Shine. And you know, viewers of Mudi Channel, that this world, this world is a place of action. This is a world where we do whatever we want to do. We can do anything. We can do absolutely anything you want, you can do in this world. But the hereafter... The hereafter is where you will be held accountable for everything that you did. And you'll be punished for those things that are classed as sins and you'll be rewarded for those things that are classed as deeds. So now is the time for action. And tomorrow, on the day of judgment, in our dark and lonely graves, will be a time for accountability. And the wise person is he who plans for that time. A wise person he is, he realizes that this is the time that I'm going to be tested. This is the time that I'm going to be held accountable. And so now is my opportunity. Whilst I'm here, it is an opportunity to perform those good deeds, those good actions that will benefit me in the hereafter. And inshallah, today we're going to talk about the hereafter. We're going to think about the hereafter. We're going to make you try and contemplate and realize that that is where we are going. And what do we need to get there? And what do we do to benefit us there? And what is going to happen when we go there? Inshallah, and I pray to Allah that we all make good intentions and that we can all benefit from this, learn from this and act upon this. But as you know, viewers of the channel, that when you watch Arise and Shine, then after the Talawat, we have the daily Talawat. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Salli ala al-Habibina Salli ala Muhammadin Salli ala Oh, oh, oh. 
में صلی اللہ تعالیٰ علیہ محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم یوز مدی چین ان دی مڈل آف دیٹ دیر واز اے سینٹینس دین ہی مینشن دا ناتھ وان مینشن اینڈ آئی ول ٹرانسلیٹ انٹو انگلش فار یو دا فائیو گو اینڈ اونلی فور ریٹرن مینی دیٹ وین یو گو ٹو دا گریو یارڈ فائیو پیپل گو اے منیمم آف فائیو پیپل ول گو دیر ول بی فور پیپل کیرنگ دا کافین بٹ فور پیپل ول اونلی ریٹرن مینی دا فیفت ول بی دیر فائیو گو اینڈ اونلی فور ریٹرن When will that time be where we will be amongst that five? When will that time be that we'll be amongst that five that we don't return? Who knows? Who knows that when that's going to happen? Who knows when that time will come where we will be carried on our shoulders of other people, carried on the shoulders to the masjid, 
and Namaz Janazah will then be read and then we'll be carried on the shoulders of our fellow Muslims who will carry us to a vehicle. The vehicle will drive to the graveyard and once again we'll be carried on someone's shoulders. Our helpless bodies will be lowered into that dark and lonely grave. And then we'll hear the sounds of dirt being thrown on top of us. And then we'll hear the footsteps of the people walking away. And then, then it's just us in our dark and lonely graves with our good and our bad deeds. Have we ever thought about that time? Can you imagine, if you were to close your eyes, could you imagine what it would be like in that dark and lonely grave? Allah. You know, it's something, it's weird, you know, like when you, when you were doing a degree, I remember that when I was doing my degree and I went to university and it was a four year course. And when I started doing the course, it kind of like scared me in a sense that for the next four years, am I going to be here? Is this my life? So my life has been written out. I mean, it's, ne it's never written out. But I had this mindset, I thought to myself, you know, what? that means I'm going to be here for the next four years. And so certainty in some places comforts people, but certainty can also scare people. Certainty in some places can give people the comfort that they know that their lives are laid out in front of them. They're going to do this, they're going to do this, they're going to do this. And this certainty comforts them. But have you ever also put along with that certainty, the certainty that you are going to die? The certainty that you're going to enter that dark and lonely grave? The certainty that that time will come where you're going to be held accountably? So people like certainties in life. People don't like risk. People don't like the unknown. But when you have these certainties, you also need to think about that certainty. That certainty where you're going to enter that dark and lonely grave. That certainty where you're going to be held accountable for every single thing that you do today. And viewers of Mother Channel, that's what we want to talk about today. The contemplation, the, the thinking, the worry, the thought, the mindset that we need to have about the hereafter. And I'm going to read out you a parable now that will hopefully make us think. It is written in the book Ayuna al Kayat, a book that's published by Maktab al -Buddin. Again, you can download this book completely free of charge. On page 137. And it stated there that Hazrat Yazid bin Salt, Rahmatullahi ta'ala states that once I travelled to Basra to meet my pious and devout friend. When I reached his house, I saw that he was in a very delicate situation and due to the severity of his illness, was very close to his death. His children, wife and parents stood around him crying and their faces were covered with despair. I said salam to them. And I asked, what are you feeling at this moment in time? Listen to this. My friend said, at this moment in time, I'm feeling as if ants are wandering inside my body. Meanwhile, his father began to cry. My friend asked him, oh, my kind father, what has made you cry? The father replied, my beloved child, the sorrow of being separated from you is making me cry. What will happen to us after you die? Then his mother, children, and wife also began to cry. Allah, my friend asked his mother, Oh my mother, why are you crying? The mother replied, My beloved child, the sorrow of being separated from you is making me cry. How will I live without you? He then asked his wife, What has forced you to cry? She replied, My dear husband, our life will be difficult without you. The sorrow of being separated you is causing a wound in my heart. He then called his children close and asked them, My children, what has made you cry? The children replied, After you die, we will become orphans. We will be deprived of a loving father. What will happen to us after you die? The sorrow of being separated from you is making us cry. After listening to everyone, my friend said to me, Make me sit. Allah Akbar. When I was made to sit, he said to his family members, All of you are crying for this world. You're all not crying for me. But you are crying because of the fear of losing your own benefits. Is there anyone from you that cried over the fact that after death, what will be my condition? Soon I will be left in a dark and frightening grave. Did any one of you cry over the fact that I will have to face Munkar and Nakir? Did any one of you cry over the fact that I will have to appear in the blessed court of my Creator for my accountability 
not one of you even cried over the difficulties I will face in the afterlife, but rather you are all crying because of your own worldly benefits. He then let her scream, and he passed away. Fears of Mother Channel. That was a parable. That was a story. But isn't there a lot of, a lot of truth in that? That when someone passes away, the pain that we feel is our pain. Our pain at losing our loved ones. Our pain at losing our mother, our father. Our pain at losing our spouse. Our pain at losing our children. Our pain of losing our relatives. Do we ever have the pain inside us that what is happening to our loved one right now? What is happening to our loved one on the first night in the grave? How is our loved one passing them nights in the grave? Have you ever thought to yourself that whilst your loved one was alive, you were able to feed them. Whilst our loved one was alive, you were able to look after them. Whilst our loved one was alive, you were able to care for them. Now what is happening to them? Now they don't have anybody caring for them. You are not there to care for them. You are not there to look after them. You are not there to clean their face, wash their face, bring them water, bring them whatever they need. You are not there for them. Do we ever worry about them? That what is the state? What is, what is happening into your grave? Even when we go to the graveyard, when we go to the graveyard and we sit there and we do dua, we do fatih and we're crying. Why are we crying? We're crying because we've lost our loved one. Have we ever cried and think to ourselves that what, what is happening to this person in the grave now? You know when you go to a graveyard? You go to a graveyard and you see all the graves there. You see all the graves there. And people put all gravestones. And here in the UK it's quite popular that a lot of people put granite. In other places people put marble. In other people places put stone. They all put up gravestones. They're not only as the names of the people, our beloved father, our beloved mother, our beloved son. And they put the names and whatever they were there. And you can, you can also see that some people, even after death, they try to show the wealth of the family by having elaborate stones there. Some people, they don't have any. Some people don't want to spend on it. And whatever, whatever they do, I'm not going to say it's halal, haram here, but every grave is different. Very rarely do you see graves that are identical in the sense that the stones are identical, the, the markings are identical, the, the designs are identical. They all use unique designs and everything. Similar to our houses here, no two houses are identical. Everybody has the furniture different, everybody has the goods different. But in the same way, viewers of Mother Channel, that no matter how elaborate the grave is from our eyes, from above the surface. No matter how simple the grave is from our eyes, above the surface. Only Allah knows what is happening inside that dark and lonely grave. Have we ever thought about it? Have we ever thought about what is happening in that dark and lonely grave? I remember, it was last week viewers of the channel, I went to the graveyard. And I was sat there near a grave. On top of the grave, I saw a little light centipede wandering on top of the grave. And a thought came to my mind, you know, that if that was on my clothes now, yeah, I would brush it away. I would make sure that didn't stay on my clothes. If the ant came on my clothes, I'd brush it away. If that scorpion came on my clothes, that spider came on my clothes, whatever that snake came close to me, I would run away from it. I would try and brush it away, or if not, I would try and run away from it. I would get a stick and hit it and get it off. But in that dark and lonely grave, you can't do that. You can't brush away that ant, that spider, that centipede, that millipede. And if a scorpion comes to you in the grave and starts biting you, you know, if in this dunya of yours of money channel, an animal was, bite, was to bite you, be it a dog, be it a snake, be it a scorpion, be it whatever it was that would bite you, immediately your body would react. Your body would jerk and you'd pull yourself away, yeah, and you'd kick it off you and you would run away from it so that you don't get bit again. Being bitten by any animal once is bad enough. And so what would happen is you would kick that scorpion, kick that snake, you would kick that dog, you would run away, you would get a stick to it, you shout at it, you do anything, you scream at that animal, just to get away from that animal.
You can't do that in the dark and lonely grave. <sighs> Sorry. You know, views of Millie Channel. When you're in that dark and lonely grave, and if something bites you, you can't kick it away. You can't pick up a stick and hit it. You can't scream out to get somebody to come and help you. Imagine that for some other child. You're in that dark and lonely grave. You can't fight off anything. You can't even push an ant off your, off your coffin. You can't even push a spider away from you. And we're told that scorpions and snakes will come in there and start punishing us. Punishing us for those sins that we committed whilst we were alive. And that's just the star view of Mother Channel. That's not like the end of it. That's not the end of it. When you're bitten by that scorpion, you're bitten by that snake, that's not the end of it. The questions of the grave. You get them wrong, you're going to be punished. You get any of them questions wrong, you're going to be punished. And it's not like any other test. It's not like a test in this dunya where... You know, like... Sometimes I remember when we were doing our course. I remember once we were preparing for our exams. <clears throat> and the lecturer came into the room. He didn't say anything. He came into the room. And he wrote the proof for something. I did a, an engineering course, an engineering degree. And part of the engineering thing was you had to prove things from first principles. And you had to prove all the equations and you had to prove them from first principles. And we learned loads of them, maybe hundreds of them. And I remember one day the lecturer came into the room, and it was like two days before the exam, and he just wrote this proof. And he filled the whole both with all this proof of how this came from first principles. And he started at the beginning, put all this there. He didn't say anything. He didn't say anything. He wrote it all and walked out of the room. But we guessed. We guessed, viewers of Mother Chan, that the teacher was helping us. The teacher was giving us some sort of a hint that something like this was going to come up in the exam. So we all quickly noted it down. We quickly noted it down. And we revised it. We made sure that we knew it, literally parrot fashion, that we could write it in our sleep. And lo and behold, when the exam came, something like that came up. And it enabled us to get X number of marks and enabled us to get closer to the pass mark. And so we were thankful that he'd given us the answer, so to speak, or he'd give us some sort of a hint of what the answer should be like. And we pan for that. But for of Mother Channel, the questions that are going to be asked in the grave, the Prophet of Allah has told us them. He's also told us the answers. Yeah? How lucky we are. Sounds simple, doesn't it? Know the answers? Know the questions, know the answers, nothing to worry about. Simple. That's all I need to do. And you're probably looking at the program now and you say, okay, brother, tell us the questions, tell us the answers, and we can switch off the channel and we don't have to do anything else, do we? Because if we know the questions, we know the answers, we don't have to acquire any more knowledge, we don't have to do anything else, we have to do nothing else because you've told us the questions, you've told the answers, simple. No views of Mother Channel. No views of Mother Channel. On that day, your bodies will be allowed to speak. Your eyes, your ears, your tongue, your hands, your feet, every part of your body will be allowed to speak on that day. And if you have not lived your life according to those questions, Allahu Akbar then you're going to get the answers wrong. What are the questions? What are the questions? My Rabb Allah, who is your Lord? Who is your Lord? My Rabb is Allah. My Lord, my Creator, 
is Allah Azza wa Jalla. That is the answer. But if you lived your life taking anything else as being the purpose of your life, then you're going to get the answer wrong. Ma dinuka. What is the deen? What did you live your life on? What deen did you live your life on? My deen was Islam. I lived my life. As a Muslim, I lived my life according to the deen of Islam. What did you? Or did you live your life according to the rules and regulations of a businessman? Or a womanizer? Or a gambler? Or a sports supporter? Football supporter? Cricket supporter? And you got all, you wore the clothes of your so-called role models in this dunya, those actors and those actresses. You had the hair cut like them, you wore the clothes like them, you wore the earrings like them, you wore the nose piercings like them, you copied them. They were your role models, they were the people that you lived your life like, you were trying to copy them. You found out that they had a new, hair, uh, new beard cut, you tried to copy them. They had a new hairstyle, you tried to copy them. They started wearing certain clothes, you copied them. They became your role models, they became the way that you lived your life. You didn't worship Allah, you didn't worship the deen of Islam, you worshipped money, you worshipped women, you worshipped business, you worshipped all of these things, you worshipped football teams. To the extent, viewers of Malaysia, that in this country, and I can speak for this country, that in this country, the people that have a mindset about sports like football, you know what they say in this country, viewers of Malaysia, and this is a saying I remember reading once. It said, Astaghfirullah, that if a person changes the political party that he supports, you can still trust him. Because, okay, it's okay. It's okay for change the, support, the party that you support, you can still trust that person. It even goes on to the extent the writer said that if a person changes the religion, the religion that he faces, that he follows, you can still support him. But this country is so blind when it comes to sport and football that it said if a person changes the football team that he supports, you cannot trust that person. That's how crazy people's lives have become when it comes to sport, when it comes to become other things. So how did you live your life? Did you live your life as a Muslim? Or as a football supporter? As a cricket supporter? A film supporter? An actors? You knew more about their lives. You knew more about martial arts than you knew about the deen of Islam. You knew more about politics than you knew about the deen of Islam. You knew how to make $100 into $1,000. But you didn't know how to read your namaz. You as a mother channel, when you're in that dark and lonely grave and that question is asked to you, I'm telling you the answer today, that I live my life, my deen was Islam, I live my life as a Muslim. That's not good enough. Did you? Did you, whilst you were here in this dunya, did you live your life as a Muslim? And then the final, the final question. That is one time that we will all be fortunate in one sense. That we'll be able to see the blessed face of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam will be brought to us, and you will be asked, "What did you say about this person? What did you say about this person in the dunya?" Viewers of Madhi Channel, if you lived your life according to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, if you follow the commands of Allah, follow the Sunnah and the advice that the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave, live your life according to the Sunnah, adopt the Sunnah of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Then when you see that face, when you are fortunate enough to see that face, you will to say, yes, that is my guide, that is my master, that is none other than the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That is the person who we should recite salatu salam to. That is the person who we should try and adopt the Sunnahs of him. That is the person that who I try to copy and grew this blessed beard on my face. That is the person who I tried to wear the Imam Sharif on because I was told he wore an Imam Sharif. That is the person who told us to wear, use the Maswak. That was the person that told us to live our lives like this. That is the person I tried to follow and live all my life. If that's your answer, if you get them three answers right, viewers of Mother Channel, you've got a chance. You've got a chance. Still, we commit sins. And still, if we don't repent from them sins, whilst we have an opportunity to repent for them sins, then we're going to be held accountable for each and every one of them. And like the Nath Juan says, that five people go and only few people come back. When you're that one, when you're that one, you're not going to have this to be able to phone up a friend and say, Look, I've just been asked the question, do you know it? You're not going to be able to go 
on the web and find out the answers. Or, you know, if I want to find out the answer, I can use the internet and find out the answers today. I can find out anything today. None of that views of my channel. None of that. And so do we ever view of the channel? Well, I was talking about the hereafter. Do we ever think about it? Or do we ever tremble in fear? Do we ever worry about the test that's going to happen in the grave? Do we ever prepare ourselves for that? Do we ever think to ourselves, what is going to happen to me? Forget everybody else. Forget when you go to the graveyard and you are, should be worried about what is happening to other people. Do you ever worry about yourself? In this dunya you do. You worry about how you're going to earn money to pay the bills. You worry about how you're going to be able to afford this. You worry about how you're going to do that. You worry about which school your children are going to go to. You worry about how you're going to get your car repaired. You worry about that, oh, the washing machine's broke. How do I get that repaired? You worry about all of these things. And you'll do something about it. You'll try and do something about it. And if a person does nothing about it in this dunya, and just sits back and says, let's see what happens. Yeah. The bills, let's see what happens. The car... Let's see if it repairs itself. Yeah. Let's see if the bills get paid. What are people going to say about that person? They're going to say he's a lazy person, he's a foolish person. The bills aren't going to get paid by itself. The car's not going to get repaired by himself. This is not going to happen by itself. His children can't get, get into school by themselves. He needs to do something. And he's sitting there thinking, we'll see about it. We'll see. Some, yeah, something will happen. Dekha jayega. Yeah. Nobody would say that in this dunya. So why is it, views of Malik Channel, we're saying that about the grave? Why is it when we say that about the hereafter, that we'll see what will happen then? You know, when people, when people go to, on a holiday, they go to Pakistan, they go to India, if they go on Umrah, or they go on Hajj, or whatever they do, they prepare for it. They take suitcases and they fill them up with clothes and gifts, and they get jabs and injections, and they think to themselves, okay, when I'm there, I'm going to be there for two weeks, I'm going to be there for three weeks, I'm going to be there for a month, I need this amount of money, and they save up that money, they get all that money together, so that when they go there, they've got enough money to spend. They prepare for that journey. And they think to themselves, okay, I'm going to be there three weeks, if I'm going to be there three weeks, I need this much amount of money, I'll take a little bit extra. This is the other thing. We take a little bit extra as well, just in case we need more. So... We say, okay, we need £100 a week, so we'll get £100 a week for three weeks, that's £300. I'll take a little bit extra, I'll take £500 just to be safe. I say, you know, isn't that what we do? We take a little bit extra just to be safe. We do all these things. So viewers of Mother Channel, when it comes to the grave, why are we not even doing that? We're not even doing the bare minimum, let alone that little bit extra. Let alone that extra mile, let alone go for those extra deeds that can enable us. We even... Unfortunately, we don't even do the bare minimum views on the channel. We don't even prepare ourselves and we don't, we're, not, we're not scared of what's going to happen. Now, living a life in fear is not good. I'm saying don't live your whole life because if you live a life in fear, then, then obviously you cannot live a life as such. But do we ever contemplate it? Do we ever think to ourselves that that time is going to happen? That time is going to happen when I'm going to go into that dark and lonely grave. Remember this views on the channel. On the day of judgment... On the day of judgment, and I'm going to talk about this later on. On the day of judgment, you'll be held accountable for every single second of your life. Yeah? And nowadays, you know, nowadays science has got these, you know, recorders, CCTV. You know, they say, oh, I can have 30 days memory, 60 days memory, yeah, and it can record this. And we record, we keep backups of everything that we watch on Mother Channel for 30 days, 60 days, however long it is, we keep, yeah. And nowadays your phones can record things and you can record a voice message for three minutes, five minutes, an hour. Allah Akbar. Science is only starting to catch up. Allah has already recorded every single deed that you did from the moment you are born to the moment you die. And that is recorded. That is written down. And on the day of judgment, you may say you have forgot. You cannot remember, but every single deed will be brought forward. Just because you've forgotten that you committed the sin, don't think that the angels are forgotten. Just because you cannot remember what you did on that day, do not think that Allah does not know what you did on that day. Just because you've deleted certain things from your life, you've deleted certain histories on your phone, deleted system histories on your PC tablet, deleted system histories on your laptops and computers, don't think it's deleted from your record of deeds. On the day of judgment, you will be held accountable. Viewers of the channel, we're going to take a small break now and hopefully we've given enough food for thought 
But during this break, we're going to give you some more food for thought because we're going to have the daily reminder for today. And let's see what the daily reminder of the day is. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear Islamic viewers of Mundi Channel, let's look at the devastations and punishments of backbiting. It is stated from a famous saint, Ahmadullah Ta'ala Alayhi has stated, it has been relayed to us that in hell, the backbiter's face will be changed into the face of a monkey. The liar's face will be changed into the face of a dog. And the envious, his face will be changed into the face of a pig. Dear viewers of Mindy Channel, we need to relay what has been said to us. We lie constantly. We have envy within our hearts and we backbite whenever we are in a group. That is becoming natural within our society. But then we lift up our hands and we say, Ya Allah, give us Jannatul Fardos. But yet we turn our backs and we back up to the same tricks. Is this is what we're supposed to be doing? Are we supposed to be lying? Are we supposed to be backbiting? And do we really have to have envy within our hearts? Not really. Those people who are successful do not have any kind of rancor or envious within their hearts. They do not backbite about anybody and they definitely do not lie. My dear viewers of Mundi Channel, we have to understand that even if we have a mustard seed of envious within our heart, we will not enter Jannah at all. If we are a liar, we will be called a kadhab on the day of judgment by Allah Azza wa Jal. And if we backbite, it is like as if we have been eating the flesh of our own brother. Sallu alal Habib. Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. By the grace of Allah. By the grace of Allah. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Viewers of Mudi Channel, we just had the daily reminder today. And in the daily reminder, we were told about the actions of the tongue, backbiting and lying. And how, you know, we will be held accountable for the actions of the tongue. And on the day of judgment, then whatever the tongue has spoken again will be recorded. If you backbited, if you gossiped, if you'd lied, if you told tales, if you've slandered anybody, then you'll be held accountable for this. You know, if you're using the channel, when it comes to lying, again, it's a whole topic, and inshallah, I think maybe we've covered it one day, but we'll cover it again because it's such a topic that we need to constantly cover. That we lie without even thinking. We lie to amuse people so that they'll laugh. We lie so that people will think, oh, he tells good stories. We'll lie to exaggerate. We'll lie for a few pennies to get a bit of money. We'll lie to appease people. And we commit the sin of lying so often that we don't even realize it. You know, a lot of people have these, you know, these thusby uh, counters nowadays. Yeah. And you see people and they're there like this. You, know, you don't know what they're saying. Yeah, some people, I don't know, maybe they're just doing it as a habit or maybe they are doing the zikr of Allah as I do very, very quickly. But if we had one of them counters and we pressed it every time we committed a sin, what number would it be on a daily basis? And I think in one way, if we were honest to ourselves, it'd be a huge number. But the problem is, is we're not. And so, if I was to give you a tasbih to record how many sins you've committed on a daily basis, at the end of the day, you'd look at it and it'd be zero. Why? Because in your own mind, you think to yourself, I've done nothing wrong. Because you do not know what is right and you do not know what is wrong. You do not know what sins you've committed. And it is our duty, viewers of Mali Channel, to become aware of the sins that we've committed. I said before the break, viewers of Mali Channel, 
that on the day of judgment, you'll be held accountable for every single sin that you committed, for every limb of your body. For example, the eyes, views of religion, these eyes from which people look at things that Allah Azza wa is forbidding you to look at. They unlawfully gaze at others. They watch films and dramas and they get pleasure from looking at shameless scenes. Similarly, our ears, a lot of people are busy listening to haram, listening to music late at night, listening to songs, listening to useless and shameless jokes, listening to backbiting, listening to telling tales, and to people talking about other people's faults. Similarly, viewers of Money Channel, and this is the scary bit. Some people's hearts are being used to be filled with bad thoughts, malice, hatred, jealousy. These all happen as well. Therefore, sensible is the person who is successful in keeping his limbs from sins due to the fear of the hereafter. Otherwise, on the day of judgment, when we will be asked to account for our limbs, we will have no answers. Allah Azza wa says, and listen to this views of my channel. Surah Bani Israel, verse number 36. Translation, Kanzul Iman. Indeed, the ear, the eye, and the heart, all of these will be questioned. Allahu Akbar. In Tafsir Qutubi, it states here, from these there will be accountability for what every limb was used for. Therefore the heart will be asked that through its means what thoughts were made, whereas the eyes will be asked that through their means what things were seen. Allahu Akbar. It is also stated that this verse proves that a person will be held accountable even for the actions of the heart for example, making a firm intention of committing a sin or a heart being indulged in very spiritual diseases like malice, jealousy, and thinking that you are better than others, egotism. Scholars have further explained that a person will not be held accountable for just thinking of committing a sin unless he makes a strong and firm intention of committing it. The diseases of the heart. Have you ever had that? Nowadays, people are going to testing centers and they're getting blood talk out. Tell me, is my test positive? Tell me, is my test negative? Have I got the disease? Have I not got the disease? Do you ever sit with a scholar and say, Azur, tell me, do I have any diseases of the heart? You get your blood checked to check your cholesterol levels, to sugar levels, to get all these others and viruses. Have I got the virus? Have I not got the virus? But what about those viruses? that you've held inside you for years and years and years and they're getting stronger and stronger and stronger and these black spots, whenever you commit a sin, a black spot goes on the heart and your hearts have become black by the, because of the sins that we have committed. Have you ever gone to a spiritual doctor, to a scholar and said to the Mazur, tell me, how should I live my life so that I have a healthy heart? Not a healthy heart that we talk scientifically that pumps blood around it that is able not to have cholesterol in inside it, that has all the valves working. No. Do we have a healthy spiritual heart? Have you ever tried to find out? Any little bit, we get a little bit of a sneeze nowadays, we get a little bit of a cough nowadays, and we go and get our blood checked. Do we ever think to ourselves, am I involved in malice? Am I involved in jealousy? Am I involved in having this inner pride inside myself that I think that I'm better than others? Do I look down on other people? Do I try and scheme and plot against other people? Do I try and cause problems for other people? Do I control my tongue? Do I backbite? Do I lie? Do I swear? Do I gossip? Do I ever think about these things? In the same way of viewers of Mother Channel, that as soon as you feel a little temperature, yeah, you go to a doctor. In the same way of viewers of Mother Channel, you need to contemplate, think. Think about your actions. Because one day, when you're in that dark and lonely grave, you're going to be held accountable for it. And Amir al he's given us, he's given us this Madri Namat card views of Madri Shal, that if you were to look at this and read it, it'll only take you 8, 10, 12 minutes maximum every day. 12 minutes a day is all I'm asking for you. Read that. And it'll make you contemplate. It'll make you think about the hereafter. It'll make you think about where you're going to go. And it'll make you realize those things that you should be doing. And make you realize those things that you should not be doing. And it will also give you guidance on those things that you can do to go the extra mile, to do those extra things. Here's the mother please, 
you know, our weak bodies today, you may think you're strong, yeah? You may think you can lift 30 kilos, 40 kilos, 50 kilos. You can do all of this. You can do the bench presses. You can do all of these things. Maybe you can. Maybe you're the strongest person in that gym that you go to. Maybe you're the strongest person in that neighborhood. Maybe you're, you work in a place where you show your strength by lifting things and showing things. And people look up to you and think, wow, he's strong. All of that strength, it's going to disappear. Either it'll disappear in this dunya, as you get older, you'll have no strength. But when you're in that dark and lonely grave, Allah Akbar feels amazing. You're not even going to have the strength to push off one ant from your body. One spider from your body, you won't have the strength to push it off. No strength. And then you'll be asked. You'll be asked, what did you do with that strength? What did you do while she was strong and healthy? What did you do with it? I lifted. I pushed. I pulled. I did this and I did that. Did you worship Allah as a Did you go and perform the hajj that was further upon you? Did you read even you read your five daily namaz? Yeah, you could lift up 300 pounds, but you couldn't lift up your blanket early in the morning. That's how weak you are. You may think you are strong, but can you get up at Fajr? Can you get out and perform the wuzu and read your namaz? You can lift up 300 pounds, you can't even get on the floor three or four times. Allahu Akbar. Hakimul Ummat Mufti Ahmad Yar Khan Naimi Ramatullah states that there is accountability for bad intentions and bad beliefs, but the whispers that come into the heart uncontrollably are forgiven. He further states that these internal and external limbs will be asked on the day of judgment. That did you perform any wrongful acts? Therefore, perform rightful acts with these limbs. These Christians will not be asked for Allah's knowledge, but for the criminal to confess his fines. On the day of judgment, you're gonna, not going to be asked that, what did you do with your hands, so that Allah knows what you did with your hands. No, Allah knows. Allah knows everything, views of Mother Channel. So on that day, don't think, oh, so I've been asked the question, I can hide. I can hide and I can make an excuse and I can lie today. On that day, you will not be able to lie. On that day, whatever your hand did, it will be recorded. And in the same way that it will be recorded in such a sense that when you are asked that question, it's not for the knowledge of Allah Azza wa Jal, it's so that the criminal eye, you, will be aware of the crimes that you committed and you will confess to the sins that you committed. And then the sentence will be passed. Then the punishment will be given to us. And if we are thrown into that hellfire, where we are told that the lightest punishment is such that if all of the troubles of this world, all of the diseases of this world, all of the afflictions of this world, all of the problems of this world were faced by one person, if he had to face all of these problems, it would not be equivalent to the lightest punishment in the hellfire. So your body's strong today, but on that day. <sighs> we're going to take a small break now. And we're going to have the daily hadith and hopefully we're going to learn something today. Inshallah, when we come back, we'll carry on talking about this topic. And we're hopeful that towards the end of the program, we'll have a guest with us who can continue to discuss this topic with us. Inshallah. Viewers of the channel, you're watching Rise and Shine. Let's go to the daily hadith. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah. By the grace of Allah. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Dear viewers of Rise and Shine, who are the best of the people? Sayyidina Usman radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrates that the best of mankind Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam has said Khayrukum man ta'allam al-Qur'an wa allamahu That the best amongst you are those who learn the Qur'an and teach the Qur'an How beautiful are these words Khayrukum man ta'allam al-Qur'an wa allamahu And there are many, many blessings in regards to reciting, doing the tilawats of the glorious Qur'an The Qur'an, it will be a proof for us on the day of judgment The Qur'an it will intercede for us on the Day of Judgment. For every letter that we recite of the Qur'an, ten good deeds are recorded for us. And the reciter of the glorious Qur'an, he remains in the company of the angels and constantly good reward is written down for him. The Qur'an, it cleanses our hearts 
and it will be the Quran that will lead us into paradise. And in one narration, the position in paradise will be determined by the amount of Quran that we have memorized in this world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to keep connected with the glorious Quran and may we spend our entire lives in teaching and in learning the glorious Quran. Ameen bijahin nabil ameen. Sallu ala al Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah. By the grace of Allah. Sallu ala al Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Viewers of Muni Channel, you just had the daily hadith uh, regarding the Quran. And I pray to Allah Azza that we have a connection with the Quran. And insha'Allah, if we have that connection with the Quran, if we have that connection with the Sunnah of the Prophet of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and when we're in that dark and lonely grave, all on our own, all on our own views of Malishan, hopefully we'll have a better grave. And we're told that depending on how we live our lives, views of Malishan, that grave can become like one of the graves, one of the gardens of paradise, or that grave can become like one of the valleys of the hellfire. And when you're in that dark and lonely grave, depending on how you lived your life, if you lived your life committing sins, then a window will open up. And that window will open up and it will show you paradise. It will show you what you could have had. And then it will close. And you'll, your grave will become like one of the valleys of the hellfire. If you've lived a life of piety, if you lived a life where you have been successful, successful in preparing for the Akhirat, then a window will also open up and it will show you the hellfire. It will show you what you have been enabled to stay away from. And it is said that, inshaAllah, our graves will become like one of the graves, one of the gardens of paradise for Yusuf channel. It's up to us. Simple, isn't it? It's not up to our parents, it's not up to our wives, our husbands, it's not up to our children. It's not up to our business associates, it's not up to our partners, it's not up to our friends, our colleagues. It's up to you. It's up to you, viewers of Mother Channel, how you want your grave to be. And life, life is all about priorities. What are our priorities in this life? How do we prepare ourselves? What are our pri if our priority in this life is to make money, then what will happen is a person will run after money and he will achieve that. Or he may at least get close to achieving it or he will try or spend his whole life in achieving it. And maybe even then he might not achieve it. But if your priority and your utmost first priority is to achieve the pleasure of Allah Azawajal, and your second, your third, your fourth, your fifth priorities are to make some money, to have a business, to have a house, to have this stuff. Okay, that, but your number one priority should always be to please Allah Azza wa And viewers of Mother Channel, that's why we are here. That is why we are here. Viewers of Mother Channel, if we were to understand the purpose of creation, if we were to understand why you are here, you know you're sent somewhere. You are sent somewhere. And when you're sent somewhere, I'm like I said, when I, when I, I've worked in many, many offices and I used to get sent places. When I was sent somewhere, before I was sent somewhere, I used to ask, why am I going there? Why are you sending me to this site? Why are you sending me to this office? Why are you sending me to this place and I was told that look you're going there to solve this problem do this do that solve this do this and then come back and that was my job I used to go there solve problems and come back but I would always be told the problem I would always be told that this is what we want from you we are here for a purpose have we ever tried to find out what our creator wants from us have we ever told us what our creator told us that when you go there when you are there this is what you need to do Allahu Akbar. Allah Azza wa Jal says, and I give you the translation from Kansul Iman, Surah Al Mu'minun, Ayat 115. So, do you think that we have created you in vain and that you are not to return to us? Allahu Akbar. In another ayat of the Quran, Allah Azza wa Jal says, and I have created jinns and human beings only for this, that they should worship me. Allahu Akbar. This is why we are here, viewers of Money Channel. This is why we are here. Our purpose in this dunya is to worship Allah Azza wa Jal, to live our lives according to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to face the problems of this dunya, to face the situation of this dunya, but in facing these situations, in facing these problems, we should always remember Allah Azza wa Jal. 
and turn to Allah Azza wa Jalla. Turn to the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam whenever you need any answers. But do we do this? This is the reason why we are here, viewers of Mun Channel. And the test of this life, this test in this life that we are facing, the problems that you are facing, the, the difficulties that you are facing, all of them, how you dealt with them, you'll be questioned on the Day of Judgment. You know, whenever you, whenever you have a test, we used to have a, we used to have you know, practical tests as well when we were studying. And whenever there was a problem put in front of us to solve, the lecturer would look at us to see us how we solved that problem. And we would have to record how we solved the problem. How did we come to where we came? Now, if we solved that problem by copying, then we didn't get good marks. Yeah? So how you live your life, how you solve your problems, you're going to be asked, did you solve your problems by looking to the Quran? Did you solve your problems by looking to the beloved soul? Did you solve your problems by asking the scholars of the deen? Or in some cases, in most cases, we didn't even realize there was a problem. We didn't realize that we had the diseases in our heart of malice, of jealousy, of hatred, of backbiting, of scheming, of plotting, of trying to degrade people, of feeling this pride inside ourselves that we are better than anybody else, feeling untouchable that nobody, nobody can touch me, nobody can do anything to me, nobody can remove me from my responsibility, nobody can remove me from my status. I'm all powerful. Astaghfirullah. I'm in this position. I'm at the top of the tree. And because I'm at the top of the tree, nobody can remove me. Allah Akbar. You know the top of the tree, when the branches are cut, it's the top of the tree branches that are cut first. The roots remain there. You're stood up there and thinking you are untouchable. Then nobody can touch you. Allah Akbar. Remember this. There's always somebody more powerful than you. And if there's not somebody more powerful than you in this dunya, then Allah Azza wa is undoubtedly more powerful than anybody in this dunya. And with the blink of an eye, He can remove you from your position. You may think you're untouchable, nobody's untouchable. You may think you have the health, the wealth, and the strength. Allah Akbar. Viewers of the channel, look around you. Just look around you and wake up to see what is happening around the world. Do we not see the tsunamis coming? That when a tsunami comes in the blink of an eye, billions and billions of dollars of investment, of property, has all gone, washed away. Washed away like straws, like, you know, little pieces of match, matches, they are just washed away like nothing. The wealth has disappeared. Have you not seen people that today they are healthy and tomorrow they wake up and they cannot move in their beds? Have you not heard, views of Money Channel, that those people, they were in the office yesterday, they were doing big deals, million pound deals, they came home, had their lunch, had a heart attack and passed away straight away. Do you not remember those people? Do you not remember all those people that within a blink of an eye they passed away? So many times people pass away and they say, oh, well, I saw him yesterday. He was okay yesterday. Yeah, I saw him. I had a word with him. I saw him yesterday. And we talk about all those people that as if they, they were nothing. But it happens, viewers of Money Channel. And in the same way, will it not happen to us that somebody will say to us, oh yeah, I was speaking to you yesterday. I saw him yesterday. He was fine. I saw him yesterday. He was on Madani Channel yesterday. That could happen. It could happen to me. Tomorrow you could say that about me, that I saw him yesterday on Madani Channel. Today he's gone. It could happen to any of us. Are we ready? You know, they say that the grave is ready. Where you are going to be ready, buried is ready, is waiting for you. People have the coffins in the home. That is ready. So your grave is ready. Your coffin is ready. Are you ready? Have you heard Channel, the short life that we have? These weak bodies that we have, this short time that we have, if only the wise man is here, is him who prepares his life, uses this life, uses his body, uses his strength, uses his wealth, uses whatever resources Allah Azza wa has blessed him with, to prepare for that time when he's in that dark and lonely grave, to prepare for that time where he has an everlasting life, and successful is he, prepares for the journey to come, not the person who just waits. Views of Mother Channel, we're going to take a small break now. We've got a small package. Let's watch this package, inshallah. But stay tuned with us and inshallah come back 
and we'll talk a little bit more about this topic. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Bushra lana nilna al-muna zala al-ana wa fannana wa al-dahru anjaza wa'adahu wa al-bishru adha mu'alana Bushra lana nilna al-muna Dawat Islami is an international non-political organization currently operating in more than 100 departments all throughout the world. <laughs> One department is the Arabic department of Dawat e Islami. The Arabic department of Dawat e Islami is aimed to represent Dawat e Islami in the Arab world by creating and translating all the required content of Dawat e Islami into Arabic language to spread the teachings of Islam and reform the values of society through digital resources like social media websites and on-ground mubalighin overseas. Markaz al-Dawat al-Islami هو مؤسسة عالمية يسعى لنشر رسالة الإسلام بلغات مختلفة في جميع أنحاء العالم. The mission of this department is to reform ourselves and the world according to the mission statement of our great leader Sheikh Maulana Muhammad Ilyas Attar Qadri Damat Barkatumul Aliya. The mission statement is I must strive to reform myself and the people of the entire world. Insha Allah Azza wa Jal. واللغة العربية هي من اللغات الأكثر شيوعا في كثير من الدول. فأولى المركز اهتماما خاصا بهذه اللغة التي هي لغة القرآن والسنة. The Arabic department of Dawat Islami is representing Dawat Islami in the Arab world. This department is spreading the teachings of Islam by producing Islamic educational and engaging programs, PSMs and short videos, etc. <laughs> اللغة العربية ويفهمونها على مستوى العالم فأنشأنا قسم إدارة الشؤون العربية فالحمد لله أصبحت مشرفا لهذا القسم تقوم إدارة الشؤون العربية بنشر النصائح والتعاليم الدينية الصحيحة الموثوقة من السنن والآداب الإسلامية والفوائد الدعوية والعلمية ضمن منشوراته ورسائله من الصور والبطاقات والمقاطع والفيديوهات الإسلامية عبر مواقع التواصل الاجتماعي الخاصة بالمركز The Arabic department of Dawat Islami invites people to Islam and digitally engages them with Islamic content to keep them away from unethical and non-Sharia content. This work is for the pleasure of Allah to spread Islam worldwide and reform the values of society. <laughs> أشكر الله سبحانه وتعالى أن من علي بإتاحة فرصة العمل في هذه البيئة الدينية الطيبة لمركز الدعوة الإسلامية وأنا هنا منذ خمس سنوات وأعمل مساعدا للمدير بقسم إدارة الشؤون العربية بمركز الدعوة الإسلامية حيث أقوم بإدارة المهام وتنظيم المشاريع الدعوية 
In the Arabic department of Dawat Islami, we write different types of content in many categories like articles, posts, videos, and speeches, etc. الذين يعملون معنا في الدول العربية بما في ذلك نصوص البرامج الدعوية والفيديوهات التوجيهية ومقاطع موشن جرافيك والقصص الهادفة بالإضافة إلى نصوص صور انفوجرافيك والبطاقات الدعوية والتربوية وغيرها We translate all the needed content and literature of Dawat Islami into Arabic language شعبة الترجمة العربية هذا القسم الذي يترجم من الأردية إلى العربية حتى يستفيدون أهل اللغة العربية فنحن نترجم تعاليم سيد الشيخ محمد إلياس العطار القادر حفظه الله تعالى وأفكاره الدعوية ومنهجه وهو منهج أهل السنة والجماعة نترجمها لكي يستفيد منها العرب We record Islamic Arabic videos in Pakistan and overseas on many topics We edit all videos recorded in Arabic language we dub videos, add subtitles of Amir Ahl Sunnat, Damad Barkatum Al Aliya, our personalities, and animated videos of Ghulam Rasul, etc. It's the Islami, it's a right to rectify the people, it's all over the world. Qism Al Farai, Al Tarjama, Wad Dabalaja Al Arabiya. التابع لإدارة الشؤون العربية بمركز الدعوة الإسلامية وبحمد الله تعالى هذا القسم يتعامل بشكل عام مع الترجمة الكاملة من العربية إلى الأردية ومن الأردية إلى العربية ويهتم بترجمة المحتوى الدعوي لفضيلة الشيخ محمد إلياس العطار القادري حفظه الله تعالى It's it's a right to rectify the people. It's all over the world. The content of the Arabic department of Dawat Islami is authentic and of quality, and the content is completely based on Quran and a Hadith and the beliefs of Maslake Ahl Sunnat. عندنا شعبة خاصة استخراج النصوص والمحتوى الفعال. أما عن أهداف قسم المحتوى والنصوص. فهي تقوم بنشر تعاليم مبادئ الإسلام الصحيحة وفقا لمنهج أهل السنة والجماعة. All our content is verified from Sharia Taftish and a native Arabic scholar. ما يقوله العلماء والدعاء عندنا باللغة الأردية نقوم بترجمتها طبعا إلى اللغة العربية ومن ثم دبلجتها قام بتأسيس قسم متكامل يهتم بنشر رسالة الإسلام بين الذين يتحدثون وتقوم أيضا بإعداد محتوى توجيهي وتوعوي وتخطيط لمقاطع وبرامج تربوية ومفيدة كذلك تقوم بتسليط الضوء على القضايا المعاصرة حتى نأخذ دورنا تجاه إصلاح الأفراد والمجتمعات our videos are being published on various platforms of social media and on the official website of Dawat Islami. We analyze feedbacks and suggestions from the audience and improve our work quality. كذلك تقوم بنشر الثقافة الدينية في المجتمع وغرس القيم والأخلاق الحميدة في نفوس أفراده. What do we have for you? Arabic humdanat, 2D animated videos, ethical programs, PSMs, kids 3D cartoons, historical programs, documentaries, short stories, Facebook and YouTube live sessions. The publishing platforms of the Arabic department of Dawat Islami include our Arabic website, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Telegram, LinkedIn, Pinterest and WhatsApp. You can contact us online through WhatsApp or email. WhatsApp number 0092-311-633-6937 or through email arabic at dawatislami.net.
قناة مدني هذه القناة الدعوية التي تعمل لإيصال رسالة الدعوة والدين على منهج أهل السنة والجماعة في أنحاء العالم Madani channel spreading the blessings of Sunnah. لأنه عندنا الآن ثلاثة قنوات موجودة يعني القناة الأردية والإنجليزية واللغة البنغالية. هذه الثلاثة القنوات موجودة وتبث كلها من المركز الرئيسي المتواجد في باكستان في مدينة كراتشي وفي المستقبل القريب أيضا نخطط لقناة مدني العربية هذه القناة إن شاء الله ستخدم الدعوة والدين في الدول العربية أو من يستطيع فهم اللغة العربية إن شاء الله وبتعاونكم ووقوفكم معنا إن شاء الله سنصل إلى قلب كل مسلم أو إلى قلب كل شخص يفهم اللغة العربية لكي نخدمه في الدعوة والدين ونوصل إليه تعاليم القرآن والسنة الصحيحة إن شاء الله Come be in touch with us and help us spread the message of awareness Dawat Islami Digital Media Department Let us know if you think we can do better. Visit our website www.arabicdawatislami.net. We love Islami. We love Islami. We love Islami. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Viewers of the channel, we have our guest, mashallah, Hafiz Rafaqat al-Tariq with us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mashallah. We're talking about contemplation of the hereafter. And, uh, you know, there's so much I wanted to say. And there is so much that we can say. But, you know, how, how is it possible, Hafiz Saab, that, we, you know, when we're in this dunya, we get blinded, don't we? We get blinded about everything that's going on around us. And we don't realize, you know, even though we go to funerals, even though we see the dead body, even though we go to the graveyard, even though we bury people, even though we see it all happening, yet still, for some reason, it's as if, like, I don't know, why is it that we, we don't see? You know, when you're driving a car, you know that you're running the risk of hitting a wall, and, and sooner or later, something's going to happen. And... and you, you know that there's a risk there. That's a risk. Death is a certainty. When it's a risk, we are worried. But when it's a certainty, we don't seem to care. And we don't prepare for it. Why is this, Officer? Please guide us. Please help us. Yeah, I think one of the reasons is uh, because of uh, lack of information about the hereafter. You know, Allah Ta'ala has mentioned this many times in the Quran. But we have to read the Quran to understand it. And we have to understand the Quran to act upon it as well. Now, majority of us, sadly, don't get time, you know, I'm, say, I'm, I'm talking in their language, we don't get time to read the Qur'an. Now, if we don't get time to read the Qur'an, then certainly we're not going to get any time to understand the Qur'an. Now, because that is the reason. Now, if you look at the Odiya Kiram and you look at the Ulama Kiram, why is it that, you know, this group of people are so conscious about their hereafter? But when we look about the, the, the lame people, we're not uh, as conscious as them. One of the reasons is that we haven't understood the concept of life and the concept of the hereafter as well. Now, every person wants to be a winner. You know, if you have a business, you want to be successful, you want to be a winner. No one wants to lose anything, especially money. We don't want to lose that. Now, Allah Ta'ala, He says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O believers, la tulhikum amwalukum wa la awladukum an zikrillah. Do not let your wealth and your children divert you from the remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jal. And then Allah Azza wa He says that those who do divert from the remembrance of Allah because of their children, because of their family, because of anything. These are the people who are the losers. So those people are the losers that those who have not prepared for the hereafter. I just want to mention a beautiful story that uh, Negrani Shura once mentioned in his bayan. That there was a, a, a certain place where every year people would choose a king. Every year they will choose a king, and then after that one year, he's ruled over them, 
they will take that king and they will leave him on a deserted island. Allah so this Allah. person was walking through the through their, their village or their area and they, they got up hold of him and they said that you're going to be our king for one year. So this person, you know, he goes, okay, uh, what am I supposed to do in that one year? They said, you don't do anything. You just chill out, as they say. You know, for 12 months, you can't, you know, you, you can do anything you want, but you're going to be our king. And he said, then after 12 months, and they said, well, after 12 months, there's this island, we're going to leave you there and you have to stay there. So the person, he was a wise person, you know, he had a mind. So he goes, okay, let me first of all see the island. So he went there and he looked at that island and he saw that there were animals, there were insects, snakes, everything. There was no chance of anyone surviving on that island for more than even a day. So that person, he, he, you know, he thought to himself, well, if I want to, after 12 months, survive, then I have to do something. So what he did was, he went to that island, he accepted their offer, he became a king. First day, he didn't sleep at home and say, right, I've become a king now. So what he did, the first day he woke up, he went, by, he went to that island, he took people with him, and he started to take out all the animals and all the insects, and he cleaned all the island. Then he started building houses there. Then he started to shift people from the mainland to the island. After 12 months, what happened? That deserted island wasn't a deserted island anymore. Allah it was an island where there were no animals, where there was nothing, and it was an island where people were, 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 were habitants. So this person, after 12 months, he enjoyed his life. In the same way, okay, we have not seen the hereafter. People might think, well, this king has seen the island. We haven't seen the hereafter. But at least we know what the hereafter is about. We know what's going to be there because we hear from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We read in the Quran. We live the life, the other lives of the awliya Islam. So we know what is there. So what have you prepared for that? Once you leave this world, you're going to, and they, like you said, it's a certainty. We are going to leave this world. What have you prepared for the hereafter? And we all want, everyone wants paradise. You know, I'm dua karte. You know, we don't offer any salah. Ma'az Allah, if that is the case, I'm choked around for them people. You know, you don't read any salah. There's nothing good that comes out of us. And then we say, Ya Allah, Jannat be Shab mujhe de de. The thing is, we need to understand that Allah Azza wa Jal, He's the owner of everything. He can give you anything you want. But Allah Ta'ala has those guidelines, isn't there? And we need to follow them guidelines for us to be successful in the hereafter as well. Hafiz Abdul, a lot of people, they have this mindset, ke, I'll see what happens. And we'll, 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 what will happen that day, we'll see what will happen on that day. What do we say to those people? So to those people, he says, you know, there's a lot of things that we can say. For example, if you say that, you know, we'll, say, we'll see what happens out there. Then, you know, when you wake up in the morning, just say, it's all right, I'll stay at home. Forget the work, forget this. you got to wake up, you got to physically do something, don't you? And then you get paid. And this world is a place of amal. The hereafter is a place of jazaq. If you haven't done the amal according to the rules of Islam and according to the will of Allah Azza wa Jal, how are you going to get paid the jaza on the day of judgment? There was another king's story, Abdul Habiba is beyond once I was uh, listening to. Now this king, he was in his last moments of his life and he had a handkerchief with him. So he gave this handkerchief to one of his close ministers. And he, you know, the king thought that he was a very clever person. So he went to that minister and he says, the, uh, the, the person that you see the most foolish, Bevakuf, the, the foolish person, go and give him this handkerchief, yeah, and put it on his head and say that you are the foolish person. So the minister, he goes around all the kingdom, doesn't find anyone, because everyone's busy doing something. And he comes back, and when the king is really nearly to his deathbed, he comes and he puts the handkerchief on the king's head. And the king, he says, why are we putting on my head for? He goes that I have not seen a foolish person like you. You are, you knew that you were going to die, but you never prepared for the hereafter. Allah Akbar. And then Allah. Khalid, there's another very beautiful vaqiyah. You know, sometimes, you know, we, we think life in this world, everything is it. Ab dekhe, thodi der ke liye, just for a little for a while, even if you relax, what the consequences would be. There was a king and he had a maid. And he said to that maid that go and make me the bed. So the king, you know, he was working, preparing to go to sleep that night. So the maid, she went there, she prepared the bed. And because the bed was so soft and everything, she thought that I'll just, I'll just lie down in this bed for a few seconds and just see what this bed is like. 
So while she was sleeping in that bed, the king walked into the room and he was so enraged and angry and he started whipping her, lashing her, hitting her. And as he was hitting her, the, the maid was smiling and the king stopped and he goes, have you gone mental? I'm hitting you, in, you know, you're in pain. But instead of crying, why are you smiling? You know what she said? Only for a few moments that I slept in this bed, I was, unco- you know, I was conscious. I wasn't even thinking about the, 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 the consequences. This is the punishment I get. Just imagine what you will, the punishment you will get on the day of judgment. You haven't even prepared for the hereafter. Now, again, you know, some people sometimes they say, you know, like you said, this is a very, very big statement that people are making. Why, why are you going to see? Baad mein kya dekha jayega? You know, when you are thrown into the fire of hell, and the Grand Shura's full bayan is in there. Lo kya kehenge aur kya ye is tarah ke bayan hai mere ne Grand Shura ke. So the thing is, this is not a joke. Life is a serious thing. You know, we do have our ups and downs. The Shaitan does grab hold of us. The Shaitan does make us lazy. This world is not everything. Allah di khalaq al maut wal hayat al yabluwa kum ayyukum ahsanu amala. Allah Ta'ala, he says that we prepared life and death so that we can judge who does the good actions here. Do something good here. Don't wait till tomorrow. Do it today or else you might not have anything tomorrow. Allah. Pakistan We prepare, don't we? You know, if we want to go for a month, we prepare. We take them much, much clothes. We take so much money. I have never ever seen anyone going to Pakistan and they want to build a massive koti and they turn up there and they say, right, what we're doing, pass it with that. You know, if you don't have the money, why are you here for? So in the, in the, in the same way, on the day of judgment, you expect Allah Ta'ala to grant you that garden of paradise and you haven't done anything and then you say, where's my palace? Well, you haven't done anything. Where are you going to get? You search, you know. Uh, uh, I should be have that thinking as well. And we should, you know, the, even the viewers of Madhuri Channel, even every one of us, help each Allah. other to be successful in this world and in the hereafter as well. Jazakallah Hafiz Sahib. A lot of food for thought from them. Wise words, inshaAllah. So please look after yourself and Jazakallah for giving the time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum as Viewers of Madhuri Channel, you're watching Arise and Shine and some very thought provoking words there from Hafiz Rafaqat about how unfortunately we do live our life. And that story where he mentioned the king, that the king was made aware that after one year, he would no longer be the king. And so what he did is, is during that one year, he prepared for time after not being a king, I being in the island. But he knew, he knew that he was given one year. And he knew that in that one year, I have to do something. How long have you got? How long have you got to prepare yourself for that time? We don't know. And that's the scary bit. And the other thing he mentioned, the ayat of the Quran, where Allah Azza wa says, Oh believers, let not your wealth or your children or anything cause you to neglect the remembrance of Allah Azza wa And whoever does so, they are the one who are in loss. Now what happens is, is we become engrossed in this dunya that we forget where we are trying to go. We forget our ultimate aim in this world. In the same way that views the channel, you're on a ship. You're on a ship and the ship is taking you on the destination. And the water around you, imagine the water around you is the dunya. You need to travel in this dunya to get to your destination. The problem is, viewers of Madhi Channel, when that dunya, when that sea starts coming in our ship, when it starts overflowing our life, when it starts controlling our life, then what happens is our ship sinks in the dunya and we don't get to our final destination. And then when we get there, we've got nothing because our ship sunk. And we just get there, struggle together, we get there, but we all get there, we all get to the afterlife. Everybody will get there. Viewers of Mother Channel, please, I humbly request each and every one of you. We all need to develop this mindset where we prepare ourselves for the hereafter. When is it going to happen? We don't know. What is going to happen? We do know. We are given guidelines about what is going to happen in that dark and lonely grave. We are given guidelines about what's going to happen on the day of judgment. We are given guidelines of what's going to happen on the bridge of Sarat. We are given all of these guidelines there. But like Hafiz Saab said, how many of us will open up a book how many of us would read the Quran with translation and commentary? How many of us would read the seerah of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam? How many of us would read those hadiths that tell us about the afterlife so that we become aware of what we need to do? Viewers of Mandir Channel, you've been watching Rise and Shine and I hope and I pray. I really hope and pray to Allah Azza wa Jalla that today we've had some food for thought. Today we contemplate on what we are doing. Today we contemplate on what we shouldn't be doing. 
And today we contemplate on what we need to do to get to that place where we want to be. And we all want to be. Everybody wants to be in a garden of paradise. Everyone wants to have, you know, the graves be like one of the gardens of paradise. Nobody wants to enter the hellfire. Nobody wants to be bitten by scorps and snakes and all sorts of insects entering our graves and eating our bodies. Nobody wants that. And we as a military channel, if that's not what you want, then you need to find out what you need to do to enable, to protect yourself from the torments of the grave and the protection in the hereafter and enable us to enter those gardens of paradise that Allah Azza wa has promised us. Keep watching Madri Channel. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah, even the darkest night will end and the sun will rise and shine. Even the darkest night will end and the sun will rise and shine and the sun will rise and shine